I'm in WA again, talking compost again as a guest of Regen WA. This time I'm in a community gardens and I'm going to be talking to Crystal about a Johnson Sioux composting system and then how to turn that compost into a liquid biological fertilizer easily and we're going to show you how to make volumes that are good enough for the farm, the home garden or even the kitchen garden. Crystal, another day, another kind of compost pit for you. Yes. What are we looking at here today, mate? So this is a Johnson Sioux bioreactor, uh, which is about 11 months old. Okay. Um, and we're at the stage where it's, uh, it's good to be uh, used. Now, this looks very similar to the composting setup that we did the other day mm -hmm. using some prefabricated mesh. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is, in fact, remarkably similar. You just have a lot more of these tubes. Yeah, originally there was six in here, so you would have six columns of oxygen coming into the system. Okay. So more oxygen and more biological activity. Right. So we're supercharging the process That's and right. hopefully getting a quicker reaction. Yes. Now, do you use layers of brown and green in this? No, this is all brown because it's quite a long, long compost. So uh, we've used a bit of wood chip, a uh, bit of leaves, um, spent plants that have all gone to brown. So it's much easier than green and brown. So this is the material that you're using to put in here. Yes. It doesn't look very soily. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But I rest assured it does break down really, really nicely. And in fact, in the grand tradition of the Farm Learning Channel, here's some you prepared earlier. That's right. And we're going to turn this into a liquid biological fertiliser, not just to be spread around the base of trees. That's right. Well, we've got our compost crystal, and you reckon it's really easy to turn this into liquid fertiliser? It is. Let's have a go. So it's really easy, Tim. Um, to make the liquid fertiliser, you need a paint strainer bag, and you just put three handfuls of the finished compost into this bag. That's really clay and soily, isn't it? I mean, yeah. there's still some leaves in there. Yeah, that's full of but goodness. That, that really does look like good topsoil now, doesn't that's it? That's right. Pretty amazing, after 12 months. Yep. All right, so what do we do with it now? So now we're going to use that hose to yep. make an extraction. All right, so this is just connected to our mains water supply. That's right. We'll put the hose in there. Yep, and give a good spray. Give it a good spray. Okay, so we're using the spray nozzle attachment rather than the jet. Yep. Well, we might go, let's go the jet, because we do need an extraction, needs a bit of pressure. Ah, uh, okay. Which, uh, okay, it's this one. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. I know. So it's pulled back. That's it. All right, so we're getting some good extraction yeah. now. So we do this until the bucket is full. That liquid that's coming out is quite dark, isn't it? It is. It's jam packed full of nutrients and, and microbiology. Now, some I was expecting you to say cheesecloth or muslin or something like that. Just the old paint strainer bag lets you do this really quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, look, you could use cheesecloth, but it's got a uh, smaller pore structure, so it may take longer to get through. Yep. And I'd rather get bigger bits through the, the cloth. Okay. Well, there's our 10 litres, mate. That's it. Fantastic. And this can just go in the garden now. At okay, the base so of some spread tree. under yep. a tree. Still, Still good. good nutrients in that. Yep. Now, you like to take a scientific approach with all of your amendments and your compost. Yes, I do. And you actually test the pH of each batch of compost as you go along. That's right. And what are you um, looking for, Crystal? Well, we're making sure that it's in the range of uh, seven because uh -huh. that's where most of the uh, nutrients are accessible by the plant. So if the compost is healthy, your argument is it should be around a neutral pH, which shouldn't, shouldn't see an acidic right. or a basic compost come yes. out of our system if it's working well. Yeah, and it will, it will work for most plants at, at a pH of 7. Well, let's have a look and see what it is. All right. And there we go, we've got a nice healthy compost with a pH almost bang on seven. And yep. if people want a really good pH testing kit, um, Inoculo Laboratories, it's made in Australia and it has several reagents. It is completely applicable to Australian soils, unlike the kits that you get in your local hardware store. Fantastic. All right, Crystal, we've now got our Johnson Sioux compost soup. Yes. What do we have to do with it? Uh, give it a good stir first to get all the goodness. <laughs> go for it. All right, so give it a bit of a stir up because it's been a minute or two since we've made it and That's we right. want to keep it all in solution. 
Yep. Now what do I do? You need to pour one litre in this nine litre watering can. Oh, you trust me with that? Yep. Let's see how we go. Most of it's going in. Yeah, most of it. Now you reckon about six seconds of pouring is typically about a litre? Yeah, about that. I reckon we're about there. Yep. So it's, it's one litre of this soup yep. to nine litres of water, mm -hmm. making up about a 10 litre mix. That's right. So that's really easy maths, isn't it? Because yes. we're, if we're dealing with a watering can that's just under 10 litres, we put a litre in it. Mm -hmm. If we're dealing with a bin that's 60 litres, we put six litres in it. That's right. And if we're dealing with a drum that's 200 litres, we put 20 litres in it. Yep. And the rest is all just pure water. That's right. And then what? Just give it a bit of a stir up. Yes. Watering cans are all very well. It's good for Doris the Gardener. But if we've got a larger amount that we want to put out, you've come across something. These cheap, simple, little battery-powered sump pumps that you can get at the hardware store for a couple hundred bucks. Yep. Chuck that in, turn it on, and you've got instant delivery of your compost mix. That's right. So you could even put this on the carry-all of a tractor with some spray nozzles that are a reasonably large aperture so that they don't clog. Yep. This thing can take quite a bit of solids before it clogs up as well. Yeah, about four mil thick. About four mil thick. Yep. So as long as your spray nozzles that are attached to this can take about four mil spray, you could actually put this out on your pasture quite easily, couldn't you? That's right. Guys, if you know someone who needs to get some compost on their pastures and thinks it's well beyond them and too technical, send them this video. And if you like this kind of stuff and these great tips, and Crystal, thank you so much. You're welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and check out Crystal through the Regen WA page. She has a workshop on compost coming up soon if you're in WA or you want to head over there for it. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Now, Crystal, you don't stop experimenting even after you've put the compost out. What are you up to at the moment? Yeah, look, I'm trying to, um, I'm taking a test of the bricks level of the plant yep. to make sure that the compost that I've applied at the bottom is uh -huh. being taken up well and it's photosynthesizing correctly to have a high bricks level. So you take a bricks reading of the plants before you put the compost on? Yes. And then you take a bricks reading of the plants, what, one, two days later, something like that? Usually about a week later. So I, okay. I will apply the compost, let it go through the plant and then yep. I will do it about a week later. And you test at the similar time of day on a similar type of day? Yeah, um, I try and do it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So after the plant has photosynthesizes uh, all day long. Okay, and what sort of um, bricks reading are we seeing at the moment on these peas? Uh, 10 at the moment, so I'm pretty happy with that. Fantastic, and if we get a high bricks reading, people might think, erroneously that oh there's more sugar in the plant so it'll be more likely to be susceptible to plant attack from fungal diseases and insects but it's actually the opposite is true the higher the bricks reading the healthier the plant the less likely it is to be sending out signals that make it open to attack that's right uh, the more sugar it can provide for itself and the microbes in the soil the healthier it is so we just know by default if it's making more sugars it's a healthier plant never stop testing guys never stop testing All right, Crystal, we've got our compost wormy juice here. What's the first thing we've got to do? Maybe not call it compost wormy juice. All right. <laughs> <laughs>